Reading for Ramadan. Well, specifically, we're speaking to our guest today, Mathilde Lujain, who will be recommending a few books that she thinks capture the spirit of Ramadan. So, Mathilde, you are the author of Big Little Steps, A Woman's Guide to Finding a Balanced Lifestyle and a Glowing Heart in Islam. Now, before you talk about your Ramadan fiction and non-fiction recommendations, Mm -hmm. would you mind taking us through your book? Um, And particularly, I'm interested in knowing what led you to writing it? Was there a moment where you thought, I absolutely have to write this book? How, what was that journey like for you? Sure. Well, um, so it's, it's been an adventure uh, itself, writing this book. Uh, you know, I converted to Islam in 2002, and I was a teenager at the time. I was 18 years old. And um, since then, I've, I've met so many women who were, who were going through the same things, who had similar situations in life. And uh, I just thought, you know, I think... Um, the world needs a book w- for women specifically, uh, which is written by another woman who understands what they're going through, and um, to really highlight all the beautiful things that Islam has to say about women. Also, I wrote it for um, for my mom as well, for her to understand what I was going through, and I didn't want her to worry, and I wanted to show her that it was making me a, into a better person. Um, So that's how the whole idea was born. And it really touches on um, everything that women um, go through on their daily lives, whether it's well-being. So I look into um, like natural medicine. I look into like the benefits of fasting and prayer as well on the body and the and the mind um but also the power foods that are mentioned in the quran and how they're good and beneficial for our bodies um and i talk about um you know mosques and prayer like everything really it's it's a very thorough uh, book i think of put everything in here and I interviewed quite a lot of women from different backgrounds and ages to make sure that it's not just me sharing my own experience but also um, that it's like a universal book that can talk to a lot of different women. Um, What I wondered was is is this a book for everyone so for non-muslims and muslims to engage with as well yeah absolutely i mean i think it's just really healthy to open a dialogue and to build bridges between muslims and non-muslims and i think i have a lot of friends who um are curious to understand more about islam and maybe they're nervous to ask or they are shy to ask or and just this book breaks it down in a very simple manner and it looks like a really feminine product as well so it's quite appealing i wanted to make it appealing for everybody um so yes it's absolutely for non-muslims or maybe new muslims or people who were born into islam as well so it's for everybody does it go into the moment when you were 18 and you realized what you wanted to do what you what you wanted to change and your family's reaction. Yeah, um, so I talk about all of my experiences. So it's actually a really personal book as well. Like it makes me feel really vulnerable to just put my life <laughs> out there for everyone to read. Um, but yeah, it goes through my whole spiritual journey, which started when I was actually much, much, much younger. I was about eight or nine years old when I started to ask questions about God. And then, you know, I asked my parents if I could be baptized. And so my parents were really supportive. And um, someone close to me passed away when I was um, when I was a teenager. And so I had all these questions that I, you know, I needed closure and I needed to understand Um, So that that really led me through my spiritual journey and led me eventually to Islam and learning more about the Quran. And I was living in Oman in Muscat at the time. So, uh, you know, the people are so warm and friendly. And I just thought it makes sense to, you know, read about the Quran first before moving on to any other religions. I was just really curious to learn more. And, and, um, you know, I had a really open mind in general about uh, different religions. And I was going to an international school with lots of different nationalities. And I would talk to my um, classmates, you know, about things that were affecting us as, as teenagers from a religious perspective. My parents were really supportive in my decision and uh, and the book has it all. So it, it talks about all my experiences and how I dealt with that as well. Reading for Ramadan. We're with uh, Mathilde Lujain, the author of Big Little Steps, A Woman's Guide to Finding a Balanced Lifestyle and a Glowing Heart in Islam. Natalie, you had a question. Yeah, um, we were just talking in the break, and this is just such an interesting um, topic that your book's all about, and really current as well. And as a teacher myself, um, I'm definitely going to read your book, (laughs) because I just have 
um, students from so many different cultures and it's so interesting to understand it in a really accessible way in a mm-hmm. non kind of scary yeah. intense way which is fantastic right. and we were just talking about Ramadan and I wondered what are the three words that really sum up Ramadan and the spirit of the month for you well for first word I would say unity um, as in community the so Ramadan brings us all together whether we're Muslims mm. non-Muslims you know we share we eat together uh, so I think there's this whole aspect of community then there's um, the elevation of self uh, where of course it's also a spiritual um, a month for us Muslims and so you know we try to be better people and better beings um, so that's a lot of inner work as well we work on ourselves and third I would say compassion um, so also as we fast we feel for the poor and the needy and um, so we have we feel more of that compassion for others yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really lovely what you say about whether you're um, Muslim or not. It's so true. Working in an international school, it is so true that everybody really just takes on the spirit of the month and and um, the culture of the school changes, Mm -hmm. the culture of Dubai changes. There is so much more thought and compassion. And and yeah, completely agree with those. I think Ramadan is also the thing that stands out for me is that it's a great time for self-reflection. I've always thought that reading is a is a perfect way of doing that whether it's fiction or non-fiction mm-hmm. makes you think and contemplate the world um and on that note you've got two books that you've brought with you that kind of capture the spirit of ramadan yeah. for you would you mind telling us what you've brought with you sure so number one is letters to a young muslim uh, by omar saif Robash. yeah um so that's a great compilation of letters that the author has written to his two young sons and uh, the n- the second book is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So the first book, Letters to a Young Muslim, we, mm-hmm. we're going with non-fiction there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a slight connection to your French background as well yeah. with Omar, isn't there? Yes, yeah, so he's the UAE ambassador uh, in Paris. And um, so he has lived there for a number of years and uh, he gives really good insights into Islam for um, non-Muslims and Muslims as well, and especially for the younger generation. And uh, the, the fact that he's writing the letters to his son makes it really personal and you feel this compassion from a father to a son that is so touching. And uh, he breaks down um, uh, topics that are in the media or that could be affecting young Muslims uh, today and um, he does it in such a way that it's very constructive and he he's really trying to open a dialogue as well. It's a really clever way of approaching it as well of getting that message across is in the form of a letter because Mm -hmm. I don't know about you but whenever anybody gives me a letter you know automatically you want to read it whatever Mm -hmm. it's about Mm -hmm. it's just a great way of getting of communicating Um, and I just wondered is there an excerpt that you could read for us so that we could get a feel for the language? Okay sure. <clears throat> this is actually from the first chapter as well. Habibi Saif, that's his son. You often ask why I'm writing a book and what it is about. Sometimes I tell you I'm writing it for you, sometimes for other young Muslims like you. I watch you grow and think of the challenges you have faced and will face. Sometimes I know that I'm writing this set of letters for myself. I'm writing this set of letters to you because I want you to have some idea of the questions that you will face and some of the answers that are out there. I do not want you to hear it from others. I do not want you to learn the most important lessons in life from people who do not love you as I love you. I want you to hear the lessons from the person who loves you most. Before you came on the show, I met your lovely daughter. (laughs) Is this the kind of book that you see yourself passing on to her? Absolutely. It really says it all in that first letter where, you know, it's it's the, the father saying it, you know, nobody cares as much as I care about mm. you. It's my mission as your parent to, to teach you the correct way. And, and of course, the fact that I have a daughter as well, yeah. I can definitely relate to that. And uh, I want to, yeah, I want to even share it with my parents. And it's a book for everybody, I it's think. It's really nice, that sense of it being instructional, but from a place of love love exactly you know because that makes such a difference and that really resonated that I don't want you to learn it from other people who don't know you it's Mm -hmm. that kind of um giving the the lessons of life but from a place of real love and knowing and not just from a place of giving instructions for how you could do things in life that's really lovely I think there's something to be said as well for books that you can pass around that you Mm. want to pass around to friends and family because this book has come up a lot because Omar Saif Gobash came to the um, Emirates Airline Festival of Literature Mm -hmm. um, this year and I think the year prior as well 
and uh, it's the book that a lot of my friends that I met via the festival have all said oh you you have to read this and it's the one that they've passed on to friends and family and I think that speaks volumes about it and um, what's the next book that you've got with you uh, so the second is The Alchemists by Paolo Coelho um, and so that's a, a, a beautiful novel I mean that touched me deeply and that's again another book that I was like okay everyone has to read mm. this um, so it's uh, about a, a shepherd uh, so it's from Spain he's really really close to nature and he keeps having a um, reoccurring dream that um, he needs to follow his personal legend that's how he calls it and he, that he finds a treasure at the bottom of the um, uh, pyramids in Egypt and so he's very young, uh, he, he's a boy, and so he decides to go on this journey by himself uh, all the way from Spain, whether it's on camelback or a boat or walking. And, uh, and so he takes us along the way as he meets different people and, di- and he goes through different situations in life. And everyone can relate because it's really a story about self-development. And as you meet different people in life, they all bring you um, something that you always learn from other people. And um, and uh, so, yeah, it's a really touching story and it's a, a universal concept uh, of um, growing as a human being, I think. Mm. It's the one book that people always say, oh, you should read this and <laughs> who always want to have a conversation about and it's the one that I haven't read yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did read it, at, um, but years and years ago, like when it, you know, was first popular and I remember people it was that book that people saying oh my gosh have you read that and I I kept sort of going um not yet (laughs) and then I did and it is absolutely incredible and it's one of the most quoted books like Mm -hmm. whenever you're trying you know if you're trying to find a quote to send someone or you want to that kind of you you google a a inspirational quote and it's there's hundreds from that book yeah it's like it's Rumi, Paolo Coelho, Shakespeare. (laughs) Um, Do you have an excerpt from that that you'd like to read? I do and and uh, the reason why I chose this excerpt is because, um, so at some point of his journey, he's, at the time he's in North Africa, and he starts working with a man, and they have a dialogue, and they talk about each other's uh, personal legends, as they call it, and, um, and uh, he, so he talks to this older man, and I'll read that excerpt. So the boy asks, why, well, why don't you go to Mecca now? And the man answers, because it's the thought of Mecca that keeps me alive. That's what helps me face these days that are all the same. I'm afraid that if my dream is realized, I'll have no reason to go on living. You're different from me because you want to realize your dreams. I just want to dream about Mecca. I've already imagined a thousand times crossing the desert, arriving at the plaza of the sacred stone, the seven times I walk around it before allowing myself to touch it. I've already imagined the people who would be at my side and those in front of me and the conversations and the prayers we would share. But I'm afraid that it would all be a disappointment, so I prefer just to dream about it. Not everyone can see his dreams come true in the same way. Mm. So, and I think, you know, we all come across people, we all have a dream. And, you know, my dream was to, you know, write this book, Big Little Steps. And we all come across people who kind of discourage us. And because we're, we're different, some people are made to you know, go and realize their dreams. Some others just like to dream about their dreams. Mm-hmm. And and um, some people will support you in your dreams. Some others, you know, we, we all come across this roller coaster um, because I had the idea of Big Little Steps since 2009. So as I was reading this book, I was like, yes, my, writing Big Little Steps, that's my own personal legend. And so I could really relate to The Alchemist because I also met people who came across and no, you can never do this and you're not a scholar, you can write it and or you're not this and you're not that. And then, so that's why it took me so long to write it because you you know it gets it gets to you and but then you meet some other people who inspire you and so you know you have to find that balance between everyone you meet and just stay strong and stay true to who you are and your own mission Hmm. we're gonna have to finish up very soon but before we do would you mind telling people reminding them of the title of your book who you are and where they can buy copies of it sure so my name is Mathilde uh, my Islamic name is Lujain and uh, the book is called Big Little Steps a woman's guide to finding a balanced lifestyle and a glowing heart in Islam um, so it's available online on biglittlestepsbook.com and it will be in Magrudis and Kinokuniya in a couple of days Amazing. thank you yeah. so much Mathilde it's been a pleasure thank talking you. to you thank you for yeah, having me fantastic reading for Ramadan well, specifically